Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on practical uses of AI, new approaches to improving warehouse management with data science. My name is Justin Ritter. I am the Vice President of Operations and Customer Success here at Lucas. I also have my co-presenter present himself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve York, and I'm the Director of Advanced Technologies at Lucas Systems. Thanks, Steve. To kick us off, I want to cover what we plan to cover in this presentation. Uh, first off, we want to talk about common examples of what artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, look like. We'll then get into practical uses of machine learning uh, and the applications within the warehouse and distribution center. This involves slotting, workforce planning, and also performance management. And the reason we're talking about these things is ultimately machine learning applications will make warehouse optimization much easier, faster, and more accessible to more DCs as time goes on. To kick us off, I'm going to have Steve provide a brief overview of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Thanks, Justin. Now, I'm guessing most of you are somewhat familiar with the terms artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. On artificial intelligence or AI, just know it isn't only about capabilities like vision and speech. It's also being applied more and more to complex optimization problems, and also intelligence in the sense of decision-making functions. Now, under AI, machine learning is a technique where the computer learns from data, which is very different than traditional programming, where you program rules to come up with answers, which can be problematic when it comes to complex tasks like decision-making. And finally, we have deep learning, which uses what's called artificial neural networks. This is an approach inspired by the architecture of the brain. And it's also an approach that has produced some uh, very amazing results, especially with unstructured data um, and applied to complex problems. Okay, now Justin's going to talk about the different types of analytics. Thanks, Steve. The chart I have up on the screen here shows the maturity model that Gartner has put together in regards to the types of different, uh, the different types of analytics. First off, where people typically start is the idea of descriptive analytics. This is looking at data that was captured as part of a process, and it's typically looking backwards, so hindsight. Uh, you can imagine in a distribution center environment, you may be looking at all the picks that were completed uh, for all the orders that you shipped that day. And you may have timestamps for every pick that was completed. Moving up the maturity curve, though, you want to just try to understand more than what happened, but why did it happen? And we call that diagnostic analytics. While these insights are helpful, it's more important to understand what will happen and how can we make it happen. Thinking about use cases in the distribution center, you want to understand how many people do I need to have to, in order to fulfill all the orders and get all the product out the door to keep your customers happy. Descriptive analytics and typical reports on past data may give you a, a good view in what it may take to happen. However, you're still going to have to do back of the napkin calculations that many DCs do. So thinking about predictive and prescriptive analytics, Machine learning is an approach that enables you to get to that state, actually giving you the insights to make decisions rather than doing those back of the napkin calculations. I'm gonna hand over to Steve to talk about how machine learning exactly provides this more complex analytical capability. Yeah, thanks, Justin. So machine learning works by bringing together one or more data sources, as we're showing in the slide, and then applying a machine learning algorithm to create a model. And then once you have that model, you can use it to generate predictions, generate recommendations, and so on. 
basically come up with answers to problems. Now, of course, you have to have the right data for the job, and sometimes that's the biggest challenge in it. We all know that data is being generated and collected at very high rates these days, but it also has to be the right data for your use cases. Fortunately, we're seeing more and more sources of very rich and granular data, including the data that you get from a work execution software like ours. With that kind of data and machine learning techniques, we can fundamentally change how companies approach optimization when it comes to key processes. So next, Justin's going to talk about a couple of those processes and, and uh, explain more about what I mean by that. Thanks, Steve. So when you look at different applications and you start thinking about a more traditional engineering approach versus how you apply machine learning, the differences become quite clear. In a more traditional engineering approach, modeling is done through the use of expert systems. These are systems that are rule-based and require a lot of different inputs. For instance, you know, the cost of moving product around, travel speeds, some of the rules around the warehouse, and those manually have to be put in. Um, from an optimization perspective, those become static models that are very detailed and quite hard to maintain. Uh, and you know, getting down to as time goes on, and what we find from our customers is maintaining those expert-based systems are very costly. So you typically have to have somebody on your staff who remembers and is dedicated to maintaining some of these models. And when there's changes in the environment, it does require somebody to come in and make those changes. Um, oftentimes, these expert type systems get pushed to the side and don't get a lot of attention. If you think about a different approach to this, you can use machine learning uh, to automatically calculate these rules. So from an operational modeling perspective, machine learning will take a look at all of this historical data and actually build a model automatically. The rules themselves manifest out of the data. And the optimization happens automatically as part of the machine learning. It learns how to optimize the model based on what it learned from the data. And then even more so, as things are changing in the environment, as reflected in the, the data that the model looks at, it will adjust itself automatically. You don't have to have somebody taking a look at this on an ongoing basis, or even having to worry about the models becoming stale because something significant has happened in the warehouse. These type of feedback loops um, automate all of this process as part of the machine learning approach. And at the end of the day, uh, with less effort maintaining the models, it becomes more valuable and pays for itself. So thinking about how machine learning uh, can help the managers become more effective. First off, you have to have a couple of things to kick this off. And that means you have the data. And so that data can be available on site in your existing uh, system, or it can be piped in from multiple sources and stored even in the cloud. The next thing and probably the hardest part to tackle is what machine learning algorithms do you use and how do you apply that to the data? Many companies are looking to build data science capabilities in-house, but within the distribution center, that's not really a possibility. Um, as well as we, as we know, um, supervisors and managers of DCs aren't experts on machine learning. The last thing that you need to do is have a way to visualize the outputs and understand what those recommendations look like. Um, so it's one thing to have the model and build it from the machine learning algorithms. It's another one to properly have a tool that tells a manager or a supervisor, you know, what they need need to do. And so when you think about this, you know, providing a holistic solution that 
feeds in the data automatically, applies the appropriate machine learning algorithms, and spits out the recommendations to the managers, that's a much different story than the more uh, traditional approach with engineering or even using some of the existing reports that the distribution uh, managers may already have today in regards to order history, pick history, throughput reports. Um, it will automatically give them that, those insights. So to make this even clearer, we're going to cover a couple of different use cases, the first of which is dynamic slotting. I'll let Steve cover that. Thanks, Justin. So taking slotting as an example, as we can see in this slide, optimized slotting can have many benefits, including reducing picking and replenishment costs. Now, a traditional approach here would be to create a scaled model of the warehouse and program rules that weigh a ton of different factors together. This is something that would require extensive manual tuning and in the end wouldn't yield the best results and wouldn't automatically adapt to changing conditions. On this next slide, we're showing the many factors that should be considered when making slotting decisions. Not only do we want to have the obvious factors like product velocities and affinities, but also factors such as avoiding congestion, batching method, work type, and so on. So we have many factors, we have multiple benefits or objectives, and then we have thousands of products and slots. All this adds up to a very complex system with a large set of possible solutions. Just the sort of situation that AI and machine learning is perfect for. Okay, now Justin will talk more about why machine learning based slotting is a good use case. Thanks, Steve. One of the benefits here is as data is coming into the system, the machine learning algorithms will automatically handle that change. With a traditional approach to slotting, you're either doing a total reslot or you're looking at a one shot approach and the optimized state deteriorates quickly than you think due to all those changing conditions. Traditional software for slotting also puts the users through a lot of pain in regards to configuration and guessing what some of those values are. For instance, um, thinking through what is the true cost of an inventory move or what is your inventory holding cost? These are very difficult things that we found many of our customers aren't even aware of or can't even calculate. Our machine learning approach eliminates all of this with the, the values automatically being captured. From a function perspective, we can provide product velocity forecasting. And so that allows for more proactive slotting moves ahead of changing conditions. So almost as if you had machine learning within machine learning. Order history is used to establish product velocity of affinity and we'll make velocity predictions utilizing machine learning in order to identify seasonality trends and so forth. Forecasted order data from the customer can be utilized if they have it. It may include things like upcoming promotions that indicate a spike in a product's demand, or on the flip side, the discontinuation of a product given a switch over to a new product family. We're also optimizing in the vertical direction, so trying to reduce travel distance, um, even for you know, moving up to different levels within a rack. And then also horizontal optimization. So thinking about how you slot products within a bay and taking into consideration the idea of the golden zone, which makes it easier for an associate to grab higher moving product in a more ergonomic and efficient manner. Part of what a software solution can do is provide ROI and explanations. So this actually gives motivation to the supervisor to make the move in the first place if they can actually understand what the value is of a move. So from a machine learning perspective, the recommendation generation, the product velocity forecasts, the travel distance predictions, uh, looking at how the products are similar 
and just the feedback of the data coming in, which automatically adjusts the model, that will improve users taking the recommendations given to the user. So to look at machine learning a little bit further, Steve's going to describe two other applications which traditionally would be tackled through a labor management system. Thanks, Justin. So let's consider workforce planning and performance management as the good examples of where the traditional approaches can be labor intensive and lead to suboptimal results. For these applications, we leverage the rich and granular data that our system generates. This is time series data about activities that take place on the floor during order picking and other tasks. This data, along with machine learning techniques, allows us to very accurately predict when work delays will happen, which in turn allows us to provide recommendations about moving users around to ensure work is completed in each zone on time as required to meet shipping deadlines. So we have another case here where taking a machine learning approach is a win-win. You get better answers, without a labor-intensive process, and you get an approach that automatically adapts to changing conditions. Okay, now Justin's going to talk about a few additional applications within the DC where machine learning can be leveraged, and then he'll close out the presentation. Thanks, Steve. So as you start to see the patterns and how machine learning can be utilized to take a more traditional expert-type approach to problems. You start to think about all the data that you have available at your fingertips and by machines and uh, computers looking at the data, the optimization problems that exist out there. One of those typical optimization problems is the idea of having a person move across multiple workflows. So in a warehouse, outbound picking is not just the only activity happening. You have receiving and put away replenishments, cycle counts that need to be executed. We believe machine learning can be applied to the overall throughput and the objectives of a distribution uh, manager and automate those decisions in regards to where a person should go and even considering uh, what they should do next and coordinating not only with humans but also robotics. Along with that, we can also look at waving and batching, which are traditional WMS functions that happen upstream and typically in a monolith type approach where a big chunk of work is, reduced, uh, is released onto the floor and then people start working through that wave. Machine learning can be applied to streaming orders out onto the floor and optimizing the batches for all the objectives that you have. Going even a little bit further, you can imagine how you plan uh, the people within the warehouse and even the aisles that they're working in. That can be handled through machine learning to minimize traffic and congestion, which of course impacts productivity. And then lastly, machine learning can take a look at more unstructured data and provide personalization to supervisors. For instance, taking a look at how people are feeling based on how they're talking to a system or based on um, unstructured data that's coming in from various associates. So in summary, machine learning is a new approach that can be taken for warehouse optimization. We see many potential uses of machine learning within the distribution center. We talked about dynamic slotting, and we also talked about labor planning and workforce management. Typically, that would be addressed through a labor management system. To get started with machine learning, you need the right data. And more importantly, you need to have the right machine learning algorithms applied to that data to give meaningful and actionable insights to supervisors to make changes. To have that type of data, you typically need a warehouse optimization suite, much like the one that Lucas Systems has. Thanks for attending today. If you have any questions, here's our contact information for myself and Steve. Thank you very much. For those attending live, we will now have our Q&A session.